Welcome to the Clarity and Focus session here at Consulting Unleashed. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of people here, which I really appreciate all you guys uh, uh, being uh, on uh, this session. These sessions are running every day. What I'm doing is I'm actually going through strategies, tactics that uh, you can apply to your agency to be able to grow and scale your business. Uh, we have a whole bunch of people from all over the world who are joining us on, uh, on a daily basis. All our videos here, all these sessions are recorded. Uh, we place these sessions into YouTube and we also pl place them uh, into the Consulting Unleashed Facebook group as well. Um, so if you're not a member, make sure you go to Consulting Unleashed Facebook group and and, uh, I'll let you in there and you'll get access to all these trainings. If you want to hop over to YouTube, just look for the Consulting Unleashed YouTube channel. Switch on the little bell notification because it'll actually let you know when we upload these videos. We are trying to get these uh, up every day. But the purpose of these calls is to unpack strategy, to show you things that are working right now in the current env environment and things that you could be doing or should be doing. Uh, we've got some amazing people from around the world here also sharing uh, their strategies. The second part of this is that I actually want to be able to answer your questions questions personally. Uh, I want to be able to coach you. So I've been coaching people through uh, these calls on a daily basis. So what I mean by coaching? Me crafting a campaign, a strategy, unpacking, scripting, uh, approaches, uh, you know, tactical things, things that you can actually apply uh, and uh, and uh, get results with from your business. We've had a lot of people have been applying a lot of these tactics and strategies on a daily basis and feeding back to us, coming back into these calls and sharing the results and the successes and the wins uh, that they've had along the Way. So we've had a lot of people uh, who've had some really great wins over the last 21 days of bringing clients on board in what essentially is in the lockdown mode. Um, uh, we have, uh, I've got a dear friend of mine uh, who I'm uh, incredibly thankful for, who's been joining us, uh, Damien Papworth from Globatel Marketing. Uh, Globatel uh, 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 is a company that provides a white label service in SEO, AdWords, website development, copywriting, um, uh, Facebook advertising. Uh, and uh, uh, from a perspective, from an agency point of view, uh, I've been asking Damien like uh, what's been happening, what type of businesses are actually buying uh, marketing services uh, and, uh, and I guess uh, the fact that things are, are moving, like people are moving into the market. Now I'm talking to business owners all over the world every single day. I, I had a conversation yesterday that was pretty unique, but it kind of reflected what's going on uh, in the market and I will share that conversation in today's call. But uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, and thanks to Pete, Peter Smith, who's been very, very persistent in asking for this. Um, uh, I'm going to share with you a funnel that is working right now. A lot of my consulting champions are using this funnel very, very successfully. Um, and James says, yes. Um, a lot of our champions, my, the consulting champions, my mastermind coaching group are using this funnel right now. They're running ads to this type of strategy. Um, they're getting uh, great uh, appointments out of it. The appointment opportunities are coming in. Uh, 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 they're qualifying them very well and effectively. Um, but this is not, this strategy is unlike any funnel that you've seen. There are elements of this funnel that you'll recognize, but there are two pieces in this funnel. Or there's actually four pieces. There are four pieces in this funnel and there are two extra pages that are added to this funnel. Uh, the idea is to, uh, the, the whole purpose of that funnel is to get an appointment, but to more importantly, get a qualified appointment and one that opens up and indoctrinates and, and that you can have a relationship with the person. So what most funnels do is they have like a two-step opt-in, download the lead magnet or access the information and then uh, hopefully that leads to a possible appointment, right? That's, that's how uh, one type of funnel works. This funnel is, uh, there's four videos in this funnel, right? I'm not, I'm not gonna play all the videos. In fact, I might just play one or two of them just to give you an insight. Um, but uh, but th this, this funnel is a video funnel. This funnel is a video funnel. The landing page is not a video. There's no video on the landing page. It's just a simple landing page that gets people to opt in. The second page that people opt into is the video page. The third page is uh, the appointment setting page. And the fourth page is the thank you page. And the third page and the fourth page have more information so that people, you can indoctrinate people into the process. I'm gonna show you these pages in just a moment, right? So I wanna talk uh, mainly uh, uh, the fact that we're covering strategy here, right? What we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, engage strategy. Now, I'm able to take questions throughout this presentation. I'm gonna be switching between my desktop and also my, or my laptop here, and also my iPad uh, to, uh, to kind of, uh, uh, have this as dynamic as possible. So I'm going to be doing through that. But before I get into it, I just want to find my buddy Damien Papworth. 
Uh, Damien, can I, I'm just going to allow you to, uh, to speak, mate. You, you, you there, Damien? Yep. How you doing, John? Mate, good to see you, mate. I really appreciate you hopping on these calls. Um, uh, mainly because it kind of gives an insight as to the types of people that are buying and what type of projects people are starting with you. Um, uh, we're, we're now in the middle of the week. We're heading to Thursday where we are in the world. Uh, it's Wednesday in the other parts of the world. Um, uh, kind of an update on what's, what's been happening and what's, what sort of feedback that you're getting right now. Yeah, cool. So um, I guess firstly, John, I missed your call yesterday because I was out on my surf ski in the ocean and I was trolling a lure behind me and I caught two fish. So I was pretty pumped about that. It just shows you there's abundance everywhere at the moment. It's not, there's no scarcity anymore. There's abundance if I can be catching fish. <laughs> off the back of a, was that off a jet ski? No, nah, surf, surf ski, surf... like the old surf life-saving racing skis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just chucked out a line out the back and uh, picked up a couple of fish. Yeah, so I had a, a, a bike tube around my shoulders with a line hanging off the bike tube. And I just crawled yeah. the lure behind me. I uh, caught two fish, so <laughs> the world is good. Awesome. The universe is a friendly place. <laughs> free fish, free fish. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so how's... Another, so, yep. Um, so, yeah, so this week is looking really similar to last week, which means we're not losing, you know, across our network. So, obviously, Globatel, we don't, we're not selling or serving clients direct. We're doing it through our network of digital agencies that use us, so big broad coverage of the um, the economies through the countries we operate in. Um, and this week, similar to last week, lots of new uh, marketing projects, obviously a shorter week with, with Easter, but lots, lots yep. more new uh, marketing projects, the cancellations outside business as usual have pretty much stopped. So, you know, my feel about what's going on is obviously there's a big shock of pandemic and governments restricting trade in various industries. That's dropped yep. everything down to a, a new baseline, you know, across all the industries about 25, 30% lower than what it was before the pandemic. And from that new baseline, we've gone back to business as usual. In the, in the um, industries that are recession proof, in the industries that are pandemic proof and in the new industries that have come up because of this um, situation. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Can you give some examples of the type of businesses that are starting campaigns right now? Um, so it's tradies. Um, yeah. People that go into trade people. Yeah, people that go into yeah. homes to fix problems because everyone's at home seeing the problems every day. So all those home services, property yep. services, um, e-commerce. Obviously, e-commerce is big. Shopify sites uh, and. You know, the essential uh, consulting styles of service like medical, doctors, dentists, lawyers, accountants, that kind of stuff. So professional practice, professional services, health services, e-commerce, um, yeah. uh, and people who are having to service people in their homes. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so, Absolutely. and that's right across the board. That's, 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 you know, US, Australia, UK, that's right across the board, yeah? Exactly, yeah. 100%. Everyone's yeah, in, the same, yeah, yeah. in the same situation here. So there's no difference in any country. It's just really, really similar. It's just like, it's like business as usual. We're having, apart from the two weeks where we hemorrhage marketing campaigns, it's like business as usual in a slow month at the moment. Mm -hmm. Wow. Interesting. So it's taken yeah. kind of like two and a half weeks to go from disaster mode, people dropping their campaigns, so yeah. people going, hang on a second, we've got to let people know that we're still available and we're still working and we can still handle jobs. Yeah. Yeah. So two, two weeks from going from panic to, oh, yeah. hang on, I don't need to panic. I can, I can actually have a reasonable mindset and, and, my, and plan. Mm. That's awesome. Mate, thanks for sharing. I re really appreciate you hopping on these calls. Um, but uh, if you're, you know, your white label services, I mean, you've got nearly 200 team members uh, globally. You're operating in the US, Australia. Uh, Europe, uh, UK, South Africa, uh, you know, you've got a great copy team, you've got a, you've just launched a new niche uh, sites or website service, 
uh, to get people into putting up landing pages and websites that are relevant to products that are available or should be available uh, to the market, which is awesome. Uh, your SEO guys, uh, you know, your, your ad, ads guys and Facebook guys are crushing it. So I uh, really appreciate you sharing and being on the call, at least letting us know that there are agencies out there uh, that are signing up uh, new business um, uh, and they're keeping the doors open. But more importantly, they're growing out of this in terms of opportunity, which is fantastic. So thanks, Damien. I really appreciate you hopping on, mate. Yeah, pleasure. All right, mate. Um, so let's get into... Uh, I'm just going to mute... Damien. All right. So let's get into uh, the funnel and the funnel. Um, I want to give, I want to give a little bit of context here. So I'm just going to share my screen um, just so everybody's here, just so I know that everybody can hear me. Can you just type one on your keyboard? If you can hear me, uh, just type one, just so I know you're here. There's a whole bunch of people jumping on. There's some new faces here. It's good to see some new faces here. Uh, and so we've had some people here who've been every day. Good to see you, uh, Mark. Good to see you, George. Good to see you, Andrew. Um, awesome, Eric. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for letting me know. So I'm just going to share my screen here. I'm just going to go uh, to um, my iPad. And I'll get the circle of death right now. Here we go. What happened? So in the Slack channel, open up the iPad. So you should all be seeing my iPad right now. Um, so we've got our query focus. Um, for those of you who don't or haven't been there, go to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. That gives you the YouTube channel, the Facebook group. Uh, that gives you some other resources you can take advantage of. And this session is happening daily. So you have the link for this se session happening at the same time, same bat channel every single day. So not going away. But um, uh, so today I, I want to talk about funnel, but I want to explain the funnel. I want to talk about it from a strategy point of view. Okay. So, um, uh, we, I mean, and everybody here knows what a funnel is. I'm, I'm not going to go into explaining what a funnel is, but one of the things I just want to help you understand is traditionally our funnels, when we're running, especially ad campaigns, or even if we're running our email marketing, our cold reach outreach, and we're driving people to uh, a connection point for us, where our branding, our messaging, all those sorts of things happen. Um, traditionally, about three or four months ago, our funnels were very aspirational. You know, download my uh, uh, five-step uh, Facebook ad campaign uh, crushing uh, lead generation uh, method. Uh, um, you know, go and grab my uh, PDF on uh, the uh, building automated sales processes. Like there were these specific things, these specific uh, type funnels uh, to help people with what's going on with the internet. So they'd be talking about how to do online marketing, how to do Facebook, how to do AdWords. These are traditional messages out there in the marketplace. But right now our message needs to change. And so what, one of the things that you need to understand if you're building funnels, the first thing that I do, any, and if I look at all my friends who, you know, my guru friends, right? If I look at them, the first thing they do is they don't sit there and go, hey, we're just going to pump out a funnel. The first thing they go to is strategy, right? What is the strategy uh, for this funnel? What do I want this, what do I want uh, to happen from this funnel, right? So the, the ultimate aim is obviously to get this an appointment funnel, right? Um, uh, we're going to get appointments, right? That's the ultimate aim. That's the goal, right? The goal is appointments, right? But the strategy or the steps to get to the appointment uh, that needs to be kind of thought out, right? So we need to think about um, uh, uh, what our message is, right? What's the message to the market? And remember right now, our message needs to be one of, it is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, our message needs to be security, right? Uh, 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 safety. So this is personal health. Uh, belonging. Connecting. Right. This is where right now our strategy needs to be. Our message needs to be in this area. If we're talking about leads, we're doing this sort of stuff. Let's give you a bucket load of leads. That is falling on deaf ears. This aspirational thing of growth and all that sort of stuff, that's aspirational. Aspirational is douchey. Right. Aspirational is douchey. Right, you come off looking like a predator, right? Because you're talking gain big, blah, blah, blah. What you want to do is you want to be coming off real. People don't, so, so there's a distinction in what's going on right now in the world, right? People don't want, people are not looking for happy, right? Happy is not what people are looking for right now, right? That's not what people are looking for. 
right? People are looking to be okay. I want to be okay. I want to be safe, right? I want to be secure. So our message needs to speak to the market. Our message right now needs to speak to the market. Where am I? That one? Nope. Nope. Ah, our message right now needs to speak to where the market is, right? So we're in this mode here, safety, security, that's what we need right now, right? So when I look at this funnel, I've, and the funnel that I'm actually about to share with you, and I'm gonna go through the, the pages, um, it talks about the current situation for a particular niche. So this funnel is not a general business funnel. This funnel is a very specific funnel for a niche. Now, so you need to think about who am I writing to and what do I need to grab their attention, right? What do I need to grab their attention? So there's, so like I said, how do, what's the source of traffic? Facebook, AdWords, direct email, LinkedIn, I'm driving. You want, it's one funnel, right? One page, right? One funnel to make appointments. Everybody, everybody sees the same funnel. Not 10 funnels, one funnel. All traffic from every direction, right? So wherever our traffic is right now, right? All of it goes to this funnel, right? So Facebook, AdWords, um, uh, LinkedIn, um, email, right? Um, uh, uh, social media posts, posting, all of it goes to one place, right? So all my messaging is the same for my market, all my messaging. So I can drive, I'm driving to one place. Most people have funnel, like two or three funnels uh, going on out there. You don't need that many funnels, you just need one funnel. And I hate that saying, and I know Russell Brunson said this, you're only one funnel away. I'm about 600 funnels away from my one funnel away. Out of my 600 funnels, only about 10 of them actually are my one funnels that work, right? You're not one funnel away, but you need a point, a central point for people to come to you and make time with you. And right now, we need to be in the mode of helping people, right? Not selling, but helping. How are we helping people? Because if we're helping people, this opens, up, opens us up, right, to, to making an offer, right? Helping creates an offer opportunity. Helping creates an offer opportunity, right? So if we come in with a direct offer, if that offer is wrong on the message, right, then we're going to miss the point. We're going to actually alienate, alienate our opportunities. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a second. Um, and we're going to go back to um, uh, any questions about what I've shared so far. Any questions about the idea? What's the strategy? So this strategy here is to get an appointment, right? From the appointment, we're going to open up to uh, our sales process and our cons consultation. But how we get the appointment is, is gonna be very relevant. Anybody can do this, anybody can do this. I'm gonna show you how to do this really easy, right? Any questions, just type in if you've got any questions. Uh, um, uh, if we're good, just type two and we're good and I'll keep going, I'll show you the funnel. Two if we're good, good so far. No, I set the, the funnel that I'm about to show you, I set up in ClickFunnels, but you can set this funnel up in Insta pages, Unbounce, uh, Lead pages, uh, WordPress, Thrive themes, you can do exactly the same funnel. By the way, one thing I really wanna make sure that you're aware of when I, show, when I walk you through this funnel is you'll notice that this funnel is not very fancy, right? I've actually made this funnel very, very plain and there's a reason why I wanna make it plain because my message is very, very succinct. So there's nothing, Oh, well, there's, there's, not, there's no over-graphic uh, um, uh, 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 um, design, right, in this funnel. This funnel that I'm going to walk you through is just simple, straight to the point, almost blank, almost blank. And so it has key features and that's it. So I'm going to walk you through each, 
of the steps. And then I'm going to talk about the Facebook campaigns that you run to this funnel. Now, I'm not going to show you the Facebook ads because that's not going to help you. Uh, what I will help you with and what will help you with is to understand the methodology of the strategy that goes with this funnel strategy. So what we're going to go through is I'm going to walk you through the funnel step by step and show you how it works. Then I'm going to walk through and talk about uh, if, you go, if you're going to run a campaign, the type of campaign you want to run to this funnel that will give you the greatest uh, uh, success in terms of opt-ins, right? Showing you ads is, is not gonna help you. Showing you, showing you uh, uh, ads that go to, to funnels, we've all seen what a Facebook ad is. It's not the Facebook ad we've got to talk about. We've got to talk about key functional points in the Facebook campaign that if you get those right, then you're gonna get massive conversions. Now, the people that are using this funnel, my champions, some few of my champions are using this funnel and they are crushing it right now with appointments, crushing it. A few of my champions are running direct traffic to these types of funnels in their markets, this exact framework, right? And they are getting appointments uh, with, with running their ads. In fact, uh, they're averaging uh, for a call, for a phys physical call, they're paying anywhere between $50 and uh, $50 and $80 for a phone call. Right, 50 and 80 bucks, that is super cheap because uh, uh, going back with other traditional methods of Facebook targeting and marketing, we were paying about $230 per appointment, right? 230 bucks to get, to, get, to get one person on a call. And if you're looking at, let's say your worst case scenario is a one in five conversion rate. So you were paying roughly $1,500 to make one $36,000 sale, which is a good deal because then you can scale that advertising all day long, right? So to pay 1500 bucks to make a $36,000 sale, that's a freaking awesome return on investment. But uh, roughly cost you about $220, $230 uh, 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 per appointment. Right now, we've got it down to between $50 and $80 per qualified uh, phone appointment, which is freaking awesome. Unheard of, right, when you're talking about advertising, okay? So um, let's uh, show you the funnel. I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, go back to this screen here, uh, go to this screen here. Um, uh, so let me just show you the beginning of the funnel. Let me just bring this down a little bit. Right, so um, this, is the, this is the lander. I'm gonna walk you through the landing page, okay? This is the landing page. Uh, if you look at it, it's pretty basic, right? Like that's basically it. That's nothing special about this page. We've all seen this page. Uh, you'll notice that there is a thing that says here, free training. Uh, this is where you put your logo, right? So you can brand this page. Uh, I'm showing you the, the template that I give to my consulting champions. This is the exact funnel that they're using and they're adapting, right? So notice when I talked about strategy, right? Right now, my strategy is to speak to where the market's at. So I'm focusing on, th this is focusing on uh, accounting practices. So I've just chosen this niche. If I was gonna run this appointment funnel to accountants, I was, I'm running this appointment. So notice the headline. The headline is, new training on how to recession-proof your practice, generate revenue in any economic climate, right? New training on how to recession-proof your practice to generate revenue in ec any economic climate, right? So what's going on right now? We're in a health crisis. We're in a recessionary period. We're in a health crisis and, a, and an economic crisis. So a lot of accounting firms, this is an opportunity for a lot of accounting firms to do exceptionally well in this environment, right? So this is how you recession-proof your practice, right? So inside this free training video, I'm gonna show you a simple, uh, the simple accelerators that'll add new business clients to your practice uh, uh, in an up or down markets, uh, adding new billing opportunities and providing advisory services in, crisis, in a crisis economy, uh, and the profit accelerator that has your clients staying and paying, right? So what does an accountant need? They need their customers to stay and pay, not switch. They need their customers to, uh, they need to look at ways of billing or getting money into their business by pivoting, offering new services, uh, providing advisory on the current economic crisis because what businesses need right now is they desperately need their accountants. And if their accountant is not proactive, then they're gonna go and look for somebody else, right? They're gonna look for the proactive accountants. Um, simple accelerators that'll uh, add new business. So things that they need to be conscious of that they can do to generate business, right? So this, they hit the button, get access now, right? So when they hit this button, a pop-up will appear. Now I have your name and your email address, right? When I hit this button, the pop-up appears, name and email address. Very simple. Do you want access to the training? Get access now, right? Name and email, right? So this is the first stage of the funnel. Page two. Uh, I wish I hadn't done that because now my little thing is happening. So page two. So this is the page that is now, that is the video, right? So this is a video that is 11 minutes long. 
And what I'm doing is I'm talking about all those things that I said on the landing page. So remember, this is one of adding value, right? So it's an 11 minute long video, not very long. The longest I would have this video would probably be about 15. I wouldn't go past 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes, right? Now on the previous page up here, this page here, let me just uh, close that. On this page here, this is not a, this is an image. I know there's a video here. This is a video we used to train our champions to explain the whole funnel. But here you just put an image of the video that people are seeing on the next page, right? You just put the image on that section on the landing page, right? So the second page, here's the video, right? The video, I, I actually chose to do this video above the Brisbane River. Uh, I literally did it with a, I had, a, had my iPhone sitting on a, um, a, a camera stand and then I just hit record and I did it on Zoom, right? So I recorded this video on Zoom so I could download it from Zoom and do the editing, right? Now, I, I haven't, uh, I need to change the still because that's not really a friendly, uh, happy face, although that, that might reflect uh, uh, being in a, in a uh, distressed market, right? So, so here's the thing. In this particular scenario, uh, the video is basically 11 minutes long and it goes through. Now, you'll notice here, here's some copy here. So right now, I'm looking for 10 accountants. This month, we're looking for 10 accountants who want to help to pivot their accounting practice during a recessionary period to help more businesses in your local community to choose you first for advisory, planning, and risk mitigation. Once you finish watching the video, click the button below and schedule a call with one of our practice development specialists, right? Hit the button below with one of our practice development specialists. I'm going to show you what that looks like on the next page, right? So I don't, I don't want to play this video because it's 11 minutes. We don't have 11 minutes, but um, and I know we've got a question. Let's answer the question. Da, 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 da. Uh, no, you can't see this online. Uh, I'm, uh, this is a funnel that we give to our consulting champions. We actually share the whole funnel with them. We have the training that goes with the funnel and all that sort of stuff. I'm just sharing that this is what a working funnel looks like right now. So no, you cannot see my funnel online. I haven't posted this particular funnel online, James, but you've got it here. I'm recording the video. Uh, you can go back and watch the video. I'm taking you through the process. These are really easy pages to, uh, to set up, by the way. Uh, if you notice, uh, if you're watching, like notice how this is just blank, one headline, put the video, have the button, that's it, right? Nothing special about this page, right? We want to keep, we want to go, we want to keep this very simple, right? Like keep it simple, right? In terms of what you're doing. When they come to this page, right? They want to get access, they grab, they grab access, right? We're keeping it very simple, yeah? Uh, we go to the video page, the video page explains the training. So one of my favorite things right now from a video perspective, if you're going to do video uh, uh, the, to educate the market as to where they're going right now, my favorite thing is uh, um, uh, a subject line in an email would be uh, the latest changes in the, uh, sorry, current changes in the accounting industry right now current changes in the accounting industry right now, right? So anybody who's an accountant is gonna go, what current changes in the accounting industry, right? Then they're gonna hit this page and say, hey, I put this together for you, it's an 11 minute video, right? Do you want access to it? These are the current changes. So, uh, so some people are gonna watch. By the way, the viewing rates on these videos is phenomenal. Uh, one of our uh, champions uh, has set this up. Uh, they've already had two and a half thousand views uh, on the actual video, uh, which is crazy. Right, two and a half thousand views in their in their campaign. They've only been running the campaign for less than a couple of weeks, so that's been pretty full on, right? So uh, the training is, you know, they'll say current, you know, changes in the current industry, whatever the niche is. Uh, here's your video. So they so they sit there and they want to book a call. So when they book a call, I just need to get my little things there. When they book a call, they come to this page, right? Now I will play this video very shortly, okay? But, uh, but here's the thing. So are you ready uh, to make a greater impact in a recessionary period is the headline. Uh, select a time that works for your practice scale session. To, uh, 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 we call it a practice scale session, but really it's a practice development session, right? Then take a few moments to answer uh, the questions that follow and we'll see if we're a good fit to work together, right? Uh, so they can make an appointment in my calendar. I'm going to show you the questionnaire that I use in the appointment calendar. So you're going to see the whole funnel. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just stop here, but you're going to see this, right? So here we've got a video. Um, what I might do is I might just play this video. Headphone, put the volume up. And I'm just going to hit play just so you can hear what's going on here.
And you well, Logo here, thank you for landing on our page here to book a time with our team to put a practice scale plan into place. Uh, there are a couple of things going to happen on this plan. More importantly, one of the things is to outline an objective and an outcome that you're actually looking for in building an asset in your business uh, to the aspirations of what you're actually trying to create. More importantly, to establish uh, the importance uh, and the must-haves uh, that you would like to see to actually work in your practice so you are seeing growth and more importantly, more profitability uh, and less work on your part in acquiring and attaining those customers. And number three, actually having a structured process and system that is consistently bringing A-class clients to your business, taking advantage of your higher level uh, strategy services, and more importantly, looking for opportunities to engage and refer clients at a much higher level that will invest uh, significantly in the offerings that you're making in the marketplace. So we're actually gonna look at your current situation in your practice in this. Uh, practice scales plan. The second part is we're going to look at your opportunity within the market. The third part is we're going to show you exactly what processes and systems can be put into place to actually help you achieve those outcomes. And if you like those ideas, we can even show you how we can work further together to maximize your opportunity to grow your practice. So thank you for showing up here. Looking forward to having you spend some time with one of our team members uh, to, who specializes in looking at a practice growth plan uh, for your for your uh, business uh, and more importantly so you can actually see what your opportunities are uh, and take advantage of the idea of actually building a practice that you aspire to one that you spend less time working in more time generating a uh, higher profitability and more importantly building a valuable asset that one either you can sell or two that actually supports the true aspirations of why you got into this in the first place okay so this video, the only difference in this video that would change, right? So when I first shot this particular video as part of this demo in the funnel, I shot this back in uh, January, right? So I shot this video in January. In January, no COVID-19. Today, the only change that I would make to this video would be, would be, sorry, I'll take these out here. The only changes that I would make to this video today is that what, what I would do is I would talk about, hey, right now there are things going on. People are panicking. Some businesses are shutting down. You're losing customers. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to look at a practice development plan that one, helps people in this current, re current recessionary period, uh, uh, making sure that you maximize the idea of advisory, letting people know what options they have with you, uh, and making sure that you're taking on your billings. So that's the difference in the, in the, uh, the, the video that I would put. But this page is designed to get them to book an appointment in my calendar, right? So this is the page. Now below this page, if they scroll down, here's now, these are, these are results from Unleash, but this gives you an example. Here's some of the results of, uh, of our accounting clients, right? So we have some videos, we have testimonials on this page. So because they're making an appointment, what we're doing on this appointment page is we are indoctrinating them as to who we are, who we work with, how we work with people. Now, if you don't have testimonials and case studies, I would get a case study from a resource partner or a white label person you're working with and say, give us some snapshots of some successful campaigns that you run so we can put them in the this appointment page, right? So what we're trying to do is we're not only trying to get to the appointment, we also want to make sure that they were aware that we know what we're talking about and we can actually help those people in the marketplace, right? So most people, what they do is they just do this bit and put the calendar on there. What you want to do is you want to put your testimonials and your case studies on that page as well, because, because what it does is it does indoctrination. It does indoctrination, right? So um, then we go to the thank you page. So I'm just going to hit this Actually, there's a couple of people asking questions, so let me open up the chat. Uh, uh, thanks, <laughs> thanks, James. <laughs> uh, let's say we can't get any testimonials. So, Mark, if you can't get testimonials, go to a white label provider that you're going to use to deliver the service with, and ask them for snapshots or examples of case studies that you can actually share. You don't actually have to say that you have a case study. If you don't have a testimonials, what I would do is just talk a little bit, uh, have a little video about yourself, and this is what we do. This is how we help people. Here's our methodology. So you can you, you can create another image or another video below this uh, to provide people with relevant information, if that makes sense. Okay, so you don't need to necessarily have industry testimonials. You could have a generic testimonial saying you're an awesome person, you've done some great work, right? 
or you can have your own video that indoctrinates and say, hey, by the way, here's a little bit, here's a little bit about our agency. Here's the type of people we help like you. These are the strategies we put in. These are our methodologies. Um, and so this is how we help people get amazing results. So you can actually put that in the bottom of this. Uh, let me tell you, people scroll and they watch the case studies, they watch the testimonials. If you give them another video to watch, they will, they will touch that video, right? Because right now they're in the mode of this thing. So now I'm going to go to the appointment, the calendarly appointment of the questions that they are answering to book an appointment. And this, these questions are, decide, sorry, are designed to qualify the candidate. These questions are designed to qualify the candidate. So uh, before I show you the thank you page, so this is where they go to. They go to uh, this. Let me just, um, let me just close that. So here are the questions uh, that they answer. So when they book a time on my, uh, in my appointment calendar or schedule a time with one of my team, these, these are the questions. So typical questions. So which of the following services do you provide as an accountant? Do you do personal income, business activity statements, bookkeeping, auditing, forensic accounting, uh, business planning, structure and risk management, business legal, uh, business and legal advisory, investment, superannuation, set up. What do you do? You know, mortgage lending or, or financing. So what do you do, right? Or other, right? How many partners are in your practice? Now, f for us, when I was when we were, when we were servicing uh, in our, one of our agencies in the accounting industry, we were only working with practices with three or more partners. So we were working with five, three to five, three to five plus, right? So if anybody ticks this button one, then we immediately know that they're not going to be a person we're going to work with because they just won't have the funds uh, to be able to take advantage because our fee our fees were they started they started at sixty thousand dollars that was our fee that's where we started right and from that we went up depending on what services they provided so so if this is where they qualify themselves right if you're a single partner practice can't help you unless you service single partner practices then fine you can help them right two or three people we might be able to help you might be in the sweet spot for the money three to five uh, uh partners in the practice we know that that practice is turning over between three and ten million dollars in revenue right or uh, well, actually probably three to $5 million in revenue. So three to five million, that's a bit of a sweet spot. Five to 10 starts to get to up to five to 10 million, 10 plus you're looking at a practice that, uh, that could be generating a significant amount of uh, uh, revenue in the market, right? So uh, we ask, you know, what percentage of your business is tax compliance related? Uh, some, so we don't wanna, we actually don't wanna work with tax, uh, 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 tax uh, heavy accounting firms. We want to work with people who are taking uh, their percentage of revenue from um, uh, uh, from uh, advisory, from advisory, right? So we're asking questions like, what percentage of revenue growth uh, is important you achieve in the next 12 months? What's the gap? How much money do you want to make? What percentage? I'm not asking for the money. I'm asking for the percentage, what the percentage is. So if it says 30% and they're a, they're a $5 million practice, well, they're looking to add another $1.5 million worth of revenue to their practice, right? So I, it gives me an idea of where they're heading. Right. Um, uh, of these, which of these areas are you investing marketing right now? Sponsorships, magazines, uh, advertising, Google ads, like where are you spending the money? Uh, how many new business clients do you bring on each month? Um, in actual fact, I'm just going to refresh this page because I just need to show you that I've made some changes to this. So let me just uh, 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 give you these questions again. The only change I've made, right? Um, ah, I didn't save the changes. How's that? Okay, so I'll go through the questions. So, uh, how many new business inquiries? Uh, what's the average business invest in your service annually? Thousand, three thousand, six thousand, ten thousand, ten thousand plus. Uh, what percentage of your clients are investing six thousand dollars or more? Percentage. I want to know what their, how big uh, their big clients are, right? Uh, and what types of clients would you like to work with? Uh, and what services would you like to provide, or would you like them to invest in? So, what are the areas they want to focus on to grow their particular practice? The only change, and unfortunately for whatever reason, it didn't save. The only change that I would make to this questionnaire is at the top here. The questionnaire would, would go, uh, would say, instead of the, the question above, the questionnaire would say, in the time, currently in the time of uh, coronavirus and COVID-19, which of these strategies have you implemented in your practice? So number one, have you informed all your clients of their responsibilities uh, to make sure that they uh, uh, mitigate any risks 
uh, any financial issues that they're going to incur right now in this period? Number one, have you got out to all your customers? Number two, um, have you made people aware of the stimulus packages that they can apply for uh, in the marketplace? Number three, have you held a webinar to let people know to ask questions to maybe uh, allay some fears, give some people clarity and assurance? So I'm asking, what have you done? And all of those things, I'll guarantee you that if I asked accountants, uh, this word, they might have only done one of the five or six things that would be relevant in a coronavirus environment right now. So one of the things that the only change I would make to this questionnaire is to add to what is the th what are the things right now that you're proactively doing to manage the economic crisis and the health crisis we are in right now, right? Uh, another question, are your teams working remotely? Are you actually actively engaging your customers? Are you accepting new accounting clients right now? That's another question that I would ask in this particular scenario. So all this questionnaire does is it qualifies on whether or not this is the type of practice that I want to actually speak to, right? That's all this, that's all this does in terms of this questionnaire. So if I know right down here, if, if they say I've only got two or, or one person in my practice, I know immediately that that person is not somebody I want to speak to because they won't be able to afford the solution that I have. So, so I would actually uh, perhaps either uh, reaching out to them and say, hey, look, I know you filled this out and I really appreciate this, but at the moment, you, we're not a fit. So the only thing that I would recommend that you do is maybe this or send them to someone else, right? Uh, if, it's, if they do fit, then I know exactly in advance what they're looking for, right? Because I'm anchoring how much they spend, what they're spending in this process, right? So the last page in this funnel, which is four steps, four, four pages, the last page is a really important page. It's this page here. It's the thank you page, right? So thank you. Um, your call has been successfully scheduled. So when they call, when they schedule the call in the uh, in the uh, uh, appointment setting, right? Then they get to this page. Thanks. There's a quick video, about a minute and a half, saying, "Hey, really appreciate you doing this. Thank you for 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 uh, for jumping in." But I'm going to ask you. You'll notice on the uh, you know, you'll notice on the right hand side or the right hand side of the, the screen right now is, hey, uh, um, step one, you want to add the call to your calendar. The Calendly service should already give you an email to make sure you secure that time. Number two, join our Facebook group. If you haven't already, join our free Facebook group, uh, Accounting Unleashed. Uh, it's full of other accountants who are growing and scaling their practices too. Right, so join the Facebook group. Uh, so then we've got a button here to click and join the group. Number three, watch the videos below. So number three, so thanks for, thanks for making the appointment, right? Uh, really appreciate you doing this. By the way, jump into our Facebook group, click here. Number three, watch the videos below. So what's below is, is some of the results for our accounting clients, right? And then I'll just talk about, you know, hey, thanks for being here. And here's what happens when you join or when you work with us in our service. So again, you're using testimonials and case studies, right? Uh, to, uh, to build indoctrination. One of the biggest mistakes that people make in, in setting appointments is by the time uh, the person gets to you, unless they know who you are, unless they've got some familiarity, as part of your strategy, you need to indoctrinate them to let them know who they're dealing with. If you just uh, uh, make the appointment, then they show up to the appointment, then you're gonna do discovery, and then you're gonna do the whole process, you're missing a very important opportunity. Remember, a person has to know, like, and trust you. And right now we've got time. So people will consume information that is relevant to an action that they're taking or participating in, right, uh, in this process. So let me go through the funnel again. Uh, then I'll be able to answer your questions um, uh, with that. Um, and uh, uh, just so we know. So um, page one, right? So this is a static image. Right now I've got a training image for my champions, right? Uh, so we're not doing, we're not doing that, right? Uh, so you'd have a static image that's relevant. Oh, I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. So then we have um, uh, your get access now, right? Get access now. So little uh, opt-in to get access. Remember, the topic is relevant, right? New training. Uh, if you're providing new information, latest changes in whatever industry, right? A uh, couple of bullet points. Get access now. Goes to page two. Page two is the video. Hey, new training on how to recession-proof your practice, generate revenue in any economic climate. That video could be a slide screen. It doesn't have to be you on camera. It could be you going through a PowerPoint presentation. It could be just going through slide by slide by slide, nice and easy, using ScreenFlow or Camtasia, depending on what uh, uh, iOS you're using or uh, your, your operating system that you're using. Um, uh, so it's really easy to do, right? You don't have to, if you don't feel comfortable on camera, you can just do slides. Open up a Zoom, record the slides, 
uh, there's your video, super, super easy. And what you're doing is you're demonstrating how you're helping people in this environment right? So this is not about you selling yourself. This is about you solving a problem. So one of the most important things you need to realize and understand about this funnel and why this funnel works is you are answering a clear problem that the market is having right now. That means you know what the top three or four frustrations are in the market. And that's the video you want to produce. Hey, right now, this is what's going on in your market. I just, I just put this quick video to show you how you can take advantage of this right? Right now, if you're not running webinars for your clients to let them know what their opportunities are from a stimulus package, I put together this training to show you how to do that. Boom, right? Hey, okay, we can run a webinar for our clients, right? So, so all we're doing is the value add is, is just doing a micro presentation that actually answers the question to a problem that they are experiencing right now. And that's the hook. The hook is you have the message is there's this problem. Here is something we put together to answer the question, right? So what we're doing in this presentation and strategy is we're answering a question in this video. We're not selling ourselves, we're answering the question and say, hey, at the end of the video, we say, look, if you like this, uh, you know, without, you know, it's all very great having great ideas. But one of the things that you can do and we're willing to help you is we wanna show you exactly how to apply or implement or get a better understanding of what your opportunities are. So one thing that everybody's been doing when they get to the end of this video is they've been clicking on this button below, right? Uh, you can make a time with one of our practice development specialists and we can talk about some of those key areas uh, that you can actually take advantage of. You're gonna get a lot out of that. It's gonna be a great conversation. Uh, uh, that's gonna be very optimistic and very clear or give you a sense of clarity and assurance so that you can move forward in the current environment and more importantly, to prosper at it as well, keep your team employed, get that cash back in the economy, but more importantly, have your clients come to you as the advisor because they are desperately seeking your help. And right now there are opportunities you're missing out on. Another script that I've just given you, right? In this process, right? That's the page. Uh, the schedule page uh, comes up next. Come on. <laughs> the schedule page comes up next. Come on, schedule page. So this is a scheduling page, a little video, right? Thanks for being here. This is what's gonna happen in your session. Book a time on my calendar, right? Uh, uh, here's some testimonials. Here's some things of that, that, uh, people that have gotten great results from us in, this, in the third page. Uh, then we have the calendar questionnaire. So the answer, ask the questions that you need answers to. Also make the questions relevant to uh, the topic that you're talking about. So are you, well, what activities? Like uh, notice that a lot of these questions are multiple choice, right? I'm trying not to make them write to or type too much. Just click which one's relevant so you make the multiple choice, right? And then, ah, good old little sherry screen thing comes up. And then we go to the thank you page. Thank you page, hey, next steps. Really appreciate you doing this. Here's what's gonna happen. Make sure you put the call in your calendar. Make sure that you join the Facebook group. Make sure you watch some more videos of all the cool stuff that we do, right? That's the four step. Uh, funnel that right now is crushing uh, appointments. So I'm happy to take questions before I start talking about the Facebook ad strategy that comes with the funnel. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, who loves the funnel? <laughs> who thinks the funnel is awesome? Michael's is freaking awesome, this is great. All right, classic, simple, direct, yes. Classic, simple, direct, make it easy, right? You gotta to remember, too much fluff, too much information, not gonna work. Here, you're going into, um, uh, you're going into the very thing, you're cutting straight to the core of what the market's looking for when you look at this funnel. That's what you're trying to do here, right? You're not, there's no fluff in this funnel, it's really simple. One, two, three, four, right? Yeah, you'll notice that there's nothing really pretty about the design either. <laughs> you want to, it's just minimalist. You want to keep this very minimal. Yeah, as long as the funnel, as long as the funnel, as long as you're, you're addressing a pain, the bigger the pain, the more likely they are to click through. The bigger the pain, the more likely they're going to take advantage of this. Remember, we're offering this almost like a free training, all right? 
Uh, yes, you want to manage the you want to manage the accounting. Uh, if you're having a, a Facebook page, yes, you want to manage that Facebook page. If you're using a Facebook right now, you should be building a tribe of people. In this environment, you need to be attracting and building a tribe. And if you build a tribe of like-minded people and you actively share and engage and do all those sorts of things, you're going to get a lot more response. You're going to get a lot more feedback uh, from people in the marketplace. Uh, are the case studies on the calendar industry relevant? Uh, yes, uh, you would prefer them to be. Uh, if they're not, it doesn't matter, right? But you would prefer the, uh, the case studies to be relevant. Now, to speak to that point, Chris, if you don't have industry relevant case studies, right, if you don't have them, and if you're not working with a white label provider that can't provide you with some screenshots and things like that, that make it relevant to the industry, then what I would suggest is do a very quick video that explains your methodology right you do a very quick video to say hey uh, we've been in the game for a while we know you know we know what the dynamic areas or impacts uh, that we we know how to make this is what we do this is how we help people just like you and this is our methodology this is how we help people and you can map it out and you can do a quick five minute video uh, so that they can get to know you right so they can get, they get to know you. you should all of you should have this video anyway but just so they can get to know you you want to have this video in uh, in your in the uh, appointment funnel as you go down right so so again this is a very simple approach the strategy is what is the biggest problem or pain point that is relevant right now remember we talked about uh, maslow's hierarchy of needs right uh, right now we're in the safe most businesses are in the security the safety security mode they're in the second rung uh, they need to be in the belonging connection mode they need to lift up their message to connect but anything that connects with people at a belonging stage or social connection anything that connects with a message of security and safety and stability and employment that sort of stuff and the, the last one anything that connects at a health level right you know stress uh, you know, anxiety, uh, you know, all those sorts of things. That's where the message needs to be. The message needs to speak to where the market is right now. Lots of uncertainty, lots of ambiguity, lots of complexity, right? So that's the thing. Uh, can I screenshot testimonials from people using my methodology from any market? Mark, no, they have to be people that you know, or if you're using a white label provider, that they have delivered the service. You cannot go and take anybody else's screenshots. Uh, yeah, that would be uh, that would be very misleading. But if you're working with a resource partner or somebody like, uh, for example, if you're working with Damien Papworth's team, and they've got some resources they can provide to you. So one, one of the things, you know, Damien provides uh, free auditing services, audit, SEO audits, all those sorts of things. Those are the sorts of things that you can put on uh, the page. So, you know, one of our services we provide is we audit campaigns and we audit SEO, and we audit uh, Facebook campaigns, right? Um, uh, you know, those are the things that you can put on that are relevant. And then if, uh, if, uh, uh, if your resource partner does have some examples, right, not, not actually the names of the companies, but if they have an example of results where they've blotted out the names, you can say, hey, look, here's some of the results we're getting in the industries that we serve right now. So you can demonstrate from that point of view. That's an easy way to get case studies where you don't actually have your own case study, is you can use the case studies or the examples from your uh, resource partner. Right, but you're not. You can't use the names of the companies. You won't do that. What you're doing is you might be just doing uh, uh, snapshots of you know successful campaigns or strategies uh, in the marketplace. Right. So that's that's what you're doing in this funnel. Right. Any questions? Any other questions? Who's going to go and build this funnel today? Type of one. Uh, James, you've got a question. What I'm going to do? What's um, <laughs> Mark says, I'm building this tomorrow. Uh, James, 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 here we are. Hey, James, you there? Yes, how are you? Yeah. Good, man, what's your question? Um, actually, um, I, it's an idea. There, there are so many um, moments where I wanted to know where the timestamp was, um, but obviously I can't <laughs> stop you. I, I know it's crazy, but is there any way to actually show a timer as you're talking? Uh, uh, I could I could do that, but I'm I'm uh, because I'm in the middle of it. I'm not going to put it up there. But yes, no, no, I can get no, a time. Uh, maybe Sorry. in the future, or I guess I could just yeah. start my phone as you're talking. All <laughs> you can do, all you can do, is just scrub, if you if you if you scrub through the video, you'll pick up the points. Yeah, uh, That's but true. Um, yes, good point. I I, I am uh, about to adapt. Uh, a new piece of software that's a little bit more dynamic uh, and it allows me to put a timer up on the thing so you can timestamp uh, where in the video from that point of view. Yeah. Um, but, yeah but if you think we're, we're right now, we go, we've just been going on for 54 minutes or 56 yeah. minutes, um, yeah. uh, you know, halfway through, three quarters of the way through. So, yeah, I appreciate that. 
But do you, do you have, have any questions other than timestamping? Any questions on this funnel? On the funnel, no, but I have a question later if that's okay. Yeah, okay, cool. All right. Okay, thanks. thanks. I, will, uh, I will answer your question later. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So um, I want to talk Facebook strategy, right? If you hang out with me, I know we're coming up to our hour. I want to talk about Facebook strategy. And then I want to talk about, um, then I want to open up to your questions about uh, basically helping you with where you're at right now today. So um, I'm going to go uh, uh, to my uh, iPad. So let me do some sharing here. A little bit dynamic. Uh, you should be able to see my iPad on the screen. If you see my iPad, just type one, right? Okay. So Facebook ad strategy. Okay. Awesome. All right. So um, I want to talk. About, I, I want to talk about Facebook because what most people do is they go screenshot and show all these Facebook ads. We all know what a Facebook ad looks like, but they're a critical key factors in a Facebook ad campaign that make it work, right? One of the things that in marketing, you have to test, test, test. We should be A, B split testing uh, uh, very key parts of a Facebook ad campaign, right? The number one thing that people get wrong in a Facebook ad campaign is the strategy. They haven't thought through what the actions are of the prospective customer and what they want the customer to see, what they want to do. And then if they want them to see certain things and to do certain things, then they need to make it easy for them in their communication to direct them to those action points, right? So most people don't think through this appointment funnel that I've just shared with you is all about make, getting a person first and foremost to watch the content. That's the first action. We want them to leave some details. We want to access this, give us your name, give us your email, we'll get you access directly. We want to get you in there straight away. Give us your details. As soon as you hit the button, bang, you're in the video. Here's the training, right? So the second thing we want you to watch the video. Right. So what is the video about? Uh, it's only 11 minutes long. Right. Hit the button. We show the time and we show how short the video is. Hit the button. So I'm there. I have filled in my details and now I'm, uh, I'm into your video. Right. The next thing at the video, there's a call to action in the video. It's all very great having all these fantastic ideas that we're sharing with you. But really, if you want to take this one step further and look at ways that you can implement or take advantage of these ideas or see how these ideas can apply to your practice, like the other practices that we work with, then we would like to give you some time with one of our practice development specialists. Right. We want to give you some time. So click the button here. Next step. Uh, fill in the form. There's a little video. Thanks for being here. This is what's going to happen on your appointment, right? This is what's going to happen on your appointment. Uh, here's what you need to do. Answer a few questions. Hit the submit button, right? So we now we have the have the next question. When they hit the submit button, hey, there's another video. Thanks for doing this. By the way, do these three things. Action, right? So the next step in the action, I want you to get in my Facebook group. I want you to watch some videos of my stuff that indoctrinates you. Now, what I haven't talked about here are the email sequences that go along with what happens if they don't book an appointment and uh, 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 what happens in that part of the funnel, the emails, and what happens when they book an appointment because there are a series of emails that occur. So I'm going to step you through uh, to what happens when they opt in and they don't watch the video. Right. So an email would come out and say, hey, thanks for opting in. By the way, if you haven't had a chance to watch the video at the two minute mark, we talk about something very significant that is going on in practice right now where you're missing out on billing value. So make sure you go and watch at the two minute mark. So the email rep reminds them of what pieces are in the video. Hey, uh, next video. I'm not sure if you watch the video. Now, if they have watched the video, we know because we see the triggers in the uh, in the automation. But if they haven't watched the video, the next email will come through and say, hey, by the way, um, at the four minute mark of the video, this is what we talk about. So what we do is we have four or five emails that are reminding them what's in the video, what's, what, what things are relevant to them in the video, right? So we're pointing them to the video. Go to the video, go to the, we put this training together for you. Uh, we did this, we, if you haven't seen it, go here, go here, go here, right? So it drives people to the video. So once they watch the video, Right now, us, we have retargeting campaigns. So if anybody watches more than 50 seconds of a video, they're gonna, or sorry, uh, yeah, anybody yeah, anybody watches the first 50 seconds or 30 seconds, they automatically instantly get retargeted. So we're running retargeting ads to drive them back into the appointment opportunity, right? If they haven't watched the entire video, right? So at that point, right, I've watched the video and I book a time. When you book a time, right, I'm gonna answer that question in a moment, whoever's uh, asking the question. Uh, when you book a time, 
The next sequence in the video is the emails that come after they book the time, right? Remember, they get the thank you page. The next email is, hey, hey make sure, I just want to double check that you've put the, uh, uh, your uh, uh, video in, your sorry, your uh, appointment in your calendar. Um, here's a video uh, that gives you an idea of some of the results we help with our clients. Here's some frequently asked questions, right, about what this session is. Then there's another email. Hey, by the way, here's some case studies uh, of people we've worked with, uh, practice we work with, uh, just to let you know, uh, uh, just to give you perspective of some of the results that occurred by people implementing the ideas that we have uh, in our business, right? So we're indoctrinating those people in the sequences, right? Um, uh, on the day of the appointment, there's a, uh, we have a text reminder. So we capture their phone when they uh, make the appointment. Uh, a text message goes out, say, hey, your appointment gonna be here in one, uh, in one hour. And we also now do a message at the time of the appointment. Right now, your appointment with whoever they've set an appointment with is starting now, right? So the show up rate is huge. People not showing up uh, has diminished purely because of those sequences, right? Uh, indoctrination, uh, making sure that you understand the appointment, uh, appointment is important, making sure that you're aware that you've got an appointment in an hour, making sure that the appointment, you're there right now, hit this button, hit this link, and you'll be on the appointment, right? The whole idea is to get them to the appointment in that, in that process. So if we look at our strategy, the strategy is one, to opt in. The second strategy is get them to watch the video. The third strategy is book the appointment. The fourth strategy is make them show up to the appointment. That is the, that is the structure of the entire uh, uh, framework of the campaign, right? So Facebook strategy, there are four, there's a whole bunch of people asking questions, so let's answer the questions. Um, I just want to, do this. Uh, yes, Harry, there is a recording. If you are in the Consulting Unleashed group, Facebook group, you'll get this recording. If you are in my YouTube channel, you get this recording. Uh, what do you use to know how long they've stayed on your video? Uh, James, that is my tech department. Uh, I have a whole bunch of techie people. Uh, they're using, um, uh, they're using uh, uh, indicators out of Facebook uh, management tools and also out of um, blah, 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 some stuff out of ClickFunnels as well. So our creative team and our super team uh, do all the techie techie stuff. I know some techie techie stuff, but I probably couldn't answer that question for you. Uh, if you've got a tech person, they'll know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Uh, do you want to record the time at which uh, they leave a video for the email sequence? Uh, what order responders are you using for this? Yeah, so, so we actually have, uh, uh, so in our version, in my version, we use Wistia. And it will actually timestamp where people are watching, actually see uh, what people are watching, how long they're watching, what they're engaging, what points they're really... So in our videos, we can see very quickly where the most interesting points are. And then we can think, okay, well, we need to talk more about that idea because this, the, there's a huge spike when we talked about this idea. So yes, there's tracking software. Uh, uh, Wistia is one. There are several others out there uh, to do those sorts of things, Chris. Absolutely, right? Um, so yes, our autoresponders are set up to... Uh, to uh, um, respond in the way that the client is actually engaging, right? So those are the questions there. So uh, let's talk Facebook ad strategy, right? So, so number one, right, is we just talked about what's the strategy, right? Number two is the copy. The copy, the message, that what you're sending out to people is absolutely critical, right? How, how, you're, you know, how you engage, how you answer the question, how you're opening up the, the loop for them to take the next step. Copy is really critical, number two. Number three, the creative. Really, really important, right? And number four, so your images are really important, right? So, so the creative is really important, okay? Um, number four, right, the, uh, the, the, uh, the optimization. So this is your analytics or the data, let's call it the data. This is the data, right? What's going on with the actual uh, campaign, but also optimization is all the follow-up. So what happens in the, in the follow-up of the campaign, right? Those are the key factors. When you're putting an ad campaign together, when I put an ad campaign together, or I'm sitting down wanting to do an ad campaign, right? I'm thinking about what is it that, my, that I'm offering? What is the benefit of what I'm offering? So I want to 
pull out all the benefits, right? What are the benefits of an accountant seeing the latest industry changes that are happening in the recession right now? These are the things that are beneficial. I want to put that in my copy, right? Um, uh, what is the, what is the, why is this the most important thing? I need to answer that question. Why is this the most important thing? Because I need to speak to the mind of my audience, right? Now, if I put an image, if I talk about the creative uh, part of it right now, think of where we're at right now. We're in coronavirus time, right? So maybe I will put a, an accountant with a mask on, right? Uh, um, uh, uh, type, uh, uh, tapping away on a calculator. Right, maybe I've got a, an accountant with a mask on tapping away at a calculator as an image because if an accountant sees that, hey, accountant, right? You know, or I might, you know, for or uh, 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 you'll find different genders can um, uh, inspire different responses, right? So, different genders, like I've had images where I've just gone, I've just literally pointed to the camera like that, and all I can see is they can see the finger, but if they see the image in the role, it grabs their attention, right? You, right. Uh, 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 it grabs it. Some, some, it's really weird. This image that I'm sharing with you right now is an image that I use for a lot of posting. That gets a lot of attention in in, in Facebook ads, right? Um, so those sorts of things. You know, uh, um, uh, right now, screaming and panicking. Do you want to have an image screaming and panicking, right? Uh, do you want to have people with their hands uh, on their head, uh, uh, you know, looking uh, looking down, looking down and out, right? Uh, in your images so your creative needs to reflect right what what's going on in these people's minds what are the what are they seeing what are they experiencing right now right uh, i saw this really cool ad that had somebody who was in their home in a home office and there were bars like they had prison bars uh in, in uh, uh, uh that were, they were like in lockdown in a prison with their home office and they had a the little kid uh in the bassinet right, uh, beside them so a little kid Prison image, like very striking image in the in the campaign, but that creative grabs attention, right? Really important that creative grabs attention. Okay, your optimization, you know, what happens? Uh, I've literally walked you through optimization as we can, as we have uh, in this process. But your copy needs to reflect again. What's the problem that you're solving, or what are you sharing? Why is it important for them to take action? That's the type of copy that you want to be writing. Now, a lot of people will say long copy will and short copy and there's different changes in the algorithm uh, where they are favoring certain things. Uh, for me, my thing with, with Facebook is test, 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 test. If you saw some of the campaigns that we've put together, sometimes we've had like 30 ad sets, 30, 40, sometimes up to 80 ad sets running at any one time to try and find the ads that are, that are going to scale, right? Most people do not do enough uh, uh, work. If I talk to my friend Molly Pittman, who uh, works with uh, Ezra Firestone, over at Smart Marketer. She was the, uh, the, the, uh, the VP of marketing for uh, Digital Marketer. She's probably one of the best Facebook uh, trainers on the planet. Uh, right now, she's running ad sets of five ad sets and all video. Uh, the video ads are running between one and three minutes, uh, uh, roughly the, the uh, time frames of the video and they're crushing it right now. They're, they're doing great things. So I prefer to do video ads. I would recommend that you do YouTube ads because YouTube ads are cheap right now, super, super cheap, lots of traffic, lots of people on YouTube. So uh, if you're really, if you're any good at uh, AdWords or YouTube, uh, uh, same process. It doesn't matter what ad campaign I'm running. What is my copy? What is my creative? What is the optimization uh, that I'm doing? And what is my strategy? Why, you know, what do I want to happen from the campaign? This is why a lot of campaigns don't don't work because they haven't really thought them through. They just think, hey, let's stick a random offer up there. Hey, let's look, look random copy, right? Random image, you know, uh, and, and you're not really thinking this through. So hopefully that's given you some ideas and understanding from what you need to be taking into consideration at a Facebook uh, strategy perspective that's going to give you a much better result uh, for conversions in the marketplace. So uh, I'm just going to remind you, if you haven't already, you can go to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. Um, uh, in there, you'll get the YouTube channel, the Facebook group, Consulting Unleashed Facebook group. Uh, you'll have the link to the daily webinar that we're doing like this every single day. Um, uh, you'll, and like I said, we're sharing tactics and strategies every day. We are recording this and putting the replays up in our platform. Uh, so you can get access there. Uh, if you want to take advantage of other things on that page, feel free to do so. What I'd love for you to do, if you've got benefit and value out of the stuff that I've been teaching here, please share 
this, uh, this uh, URL. Uh, just let people know that this is happening daily. Uh, some of you here have been invited. I really appreciate you doing that. So what I want to do is I want to open up to questions for strategy, for tactics, things that you need to be aware of. I'm happy to do uh, some one-on-one -on -one coaching here. Uh, if you have a microphone, I prefer to, that, that we coach you with, with a microphone uh, um, so that I can talk to you, so that I can actually give you context. And the reason I want to do that is because think about when I'm talking to somebody, the question I'd like all of the rest of you to ask is, how does this apply to me? How does this apply to me? So uh, with that, if you want, uh, there's a few people that have been chit-chatting away here. Uh, Chris. Uh, uh, yeah, if the account, but it's not about the accountant uh, self-isolating. It's just giving the image of an accountant with a mask on because the mask is relevant to the time that we're in. And the other thing, Chris, is I would test. I would test, test with the mask, test without the mask. Uh, I love the whole idea with the prison bars with the kid in the bassinet. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Uh, Peter says speechless. Uh, so we'll focus on implementing as fast as possible. Thank you. And it was worth uh, the uh, worth it harassing you on that. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad uh, uh, that you liked that, Peter. I really appreciate. Uh, I know you've been very, very patient. I know uh, this is something that I, I mentioned a while back, but uh, we are finally here, Peter. Uh, uh, and I've pretty much unraveled the whole thing for you. So, uh, so you can go back and watch the, uh, the training. Uh, <laughs> Trent says, well done on the, uh, on the uh, persistence. So uh, with that, if you want me to help you, I'm happy to help you uh, uh, answer some questions. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second um, so you can see me directly here. But if you want me to help you, just type in the chat uh, if you want to chat, I think James had a question for me, so I'm happy to answer the question. But uh, if you've got a microphone, what I'd like to do is, uh, um, yes, Mark, you can actually sell this appointment funnel to different industries. Absolutely. Right. To me, this is a great appointment funnel. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it, it's something that um, a friend of mine, Taki Moore, uh, who's, uh, who's a mentor, a friend, who's a million dollar coach, he uses, he teach, he has a similar structure to, to his funnels. He teaches this. Uh, type of methodology as well. So he's certainly someone to uh, to follow out there uh, uh, in the marketplace. But uh, I know this works. We're using it with our consulting champions and it's crushing it. Uh, we actually give this funnel away to them and they can actually apply that uh, for their business. We have a couple of different funnels. This is a video funnel. We have another funnel which is more static and actually sells a paid strategy session as opposed to a free strategy session. So it's a completely different funnel, uh, completely different setup, but it, it follows the same sorts of principles. Uh, in terms of what you're doing. So, uh, James, James Shaki, uh, uh, do you have, you had a question for me, so I'm gonna answer your question. So, how, so Chris is asking, before I answer James's question, Chris is asking this question. So Chris is asking, how do I charge for this funnel if I was selling it? So, uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, sell it, I would rent it, right? So if you, if you built a funnel for somebody, um, uh, and they need to make changes, which every funnel needs to make changes. You're not doing, you're doing a disservice. That one, that funnel is is not going to work forever. It needs to be adjusted, right? So we charge people eight thousand dollars to set the funnel up, and then we charge them uh, three grand a month to manage the funnel. So we charge eight grand up front to set it up, and then they rent it for three grand a month. And then if they stop paying, then they lose the funnel. They don't own the funnel. It's our creative, our intellectual property, our system, our strategy. So we rent the funnel, we don't sell the funnel, right? Because if you give the funnel away, they're not gonna be able to do anything with it. They don't, know, they don't have the strategy, the skill, the understanding of how to work that. If you go away, if they stop using you and they've got this funnel and if they stop running ads to it or it stops working for whatever reason, what are they gonna do? How are they gonna fix it? They have to hire somebody to come in and fix the actual uh, funnel, right? Um, so James, uh, so I'm going to answer your question. Uh, renting the funnel is a great idea. Uh, do they, do they star in the video? Yeah, they do. They do star in the video in the, in the rented funnel. They star in the video. Absolutely. So then if they stop paying for it, then you pull the funnel. It's out. Stop paying for ads, pull the funnel. You, uh, no more emails collected, no more appointments made. Uh, thanks for coming. Right, so this makes the, the renting idea of the funnel makes it very, very sticky. Makes it very sticky. Yeah. Um, to answer your question, uh, James, uh, 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 in our agency, uh, uh, we've sold over forty million dollars worth of funnels. Forty million. Four zero million dollars. Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just renting the funnel, not giving the funnel. They don't keep it. They, if they stop, they're out. They go. So that's why, I, why we actually encourage our clients to sign up for a minimum of 12 months. Because if you really want to, if you want to, really want to uh, 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 benefit from the funnel, you want the funnel to be running for a long period because you got all the data. If that makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's great. Uh, so uh, you had a question for me, James, and I want to ask that. What's what was your question? Uh, okay. I can't get on. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you loud and clear, man. Oh, you said you wanted to ask me a question. I was talking to myself here. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, in the context of what we've been talking about all week, um, the first email is going to go out on Tuesday with a JV. Um, yeah. And that's going to be that's going to be the pre-qualifying one that goes out to fifty thousand people. So mm -hmm. I was thinking about using the one that you showcased uh, many times, the short and sweet one, just asking them where they are right now. Um, yeah. And then one thing I wanted to ask you that we really didn't cover until today is subject lines. Have, are there subject lines that you prefer today, or ones that you can impart that my have been favorite, working? For you? My favorite one now, my favorite subject line is: Are you closed like everyone else, or are you open for business? Okay. Are you closed or are you, or, or are you closed or are you accepting customers? Great subject line, right? Are you closed or are you accepting customers? Yeah. The other one is uh, the, the idea behind the whole video thing, the latest niche industry changes. The latest niche industry changes. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. So um, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah, I'm writing it down as we're talking. Thank you. Yeah, all right, man. Thanks. Uh, just going to mute you there. Um, uh, so, one of the things that were asked here, Chris, uh, Australia is hardly in lockdown with minimal COVID problems. Do you still advise the doom and gloom? I'm not advising doom and gloom. I'm just saying, are you taking advantage of the opportunities in this time of uncertainty? I'm not. I'm not advertising doom and gloom at all. I'm advertising, hey, you want to be okay? That's what I'm marketing. Are you, you know, right now, it's not about being happy. It's just like, are you, are you okay? You know, are you going to be safe? Are you going to be, uh, uh, are you going to be able to uh, live through this? Yeah. Uh, are you going to come through this and be stronger than when you came into this? Right. My message is not a doom and gloom message. My message is where the market is. So just to give you a distinction, and by the way, Chris, uh, I don't know if you've been kind of watching the news in Australia, but 28% of small businesses aren't coming back. They're already dead. They've left. They've, uh, there's so many companies right now that have deregistered from ASIC. Uh, so, uh, so to think that anything is uh, minimalized or coming back to any level of normality in Australia is delusional uh, because there's going to be businesses that are going to really struggle to come back. Uh, those stimulus packages haven't hit people's bank accounts yet. Uh, they're probably about a week or two away from hitting people's bank accounts. So there's a lot of businesses out there that are out. They're gone. They're already shut down. They've laid off all their staff and they've gone. So to think so right now, uh, uh, the opportunity is in the gap that's left over in the marketplace. Right now, there's a gap. And it's a huge one. And the mini boom is going to come. And businesses aren't just going to come back, boom, open the door in one day. Businesses are gradually going to come back in the market. People are gradually coming back into in the workforce. Uh, because the situation is changing every day, Chris, they're talking about actually keeping us in lockdown for six weeks like they are in New Zealand. They're talking about completely trying to eliminate the, the COVID-19 uh, COVID spread by doing another six weeks of lockdown. Now, that decision hasn't been made in Australia, Chris, but that's what they were talking about yesterday. They were talking about shutting us down, not going out, keeping these restrictions from a business point of view for another six to eight weeks. Do we, do we, do we shut everything down and, and kill this thing or do we gradually bring people back? Like I said, can't predict the future, right? Cannot predict what's going on tomorrow. Can't predict what's going on next week. We are in a time of ambiguity, uncertainty, complexity, and there's a lot of, mis, uh, lot of misinformation going on right now. So my message has never been doom and gloom. My message is right now, you need to address certain things in the current environment. 
There are certain things that you need to be mindful of, that you need to be thinking or focused on. Those are the things I'm talking about. There is no doom and gloom in what I'm sharing. The idea is to be pragmatic and, where, and have your message exactly where the market is. Because if, if we're going aspirational, like January, I was aspirational, right? March, I'm talking practical. Let's get tactical, let's get results, and let's get cash flow now. We need results-driven outcomes, not uh, uh, global outcomes, if that, if that kind of makes sense. So hopefully that answers your question, uh, Chris. Really appreciate you uh, chiming in there. Uh, Trent, uh, 3K. So 3K is just for the funnel. That's it. For the funnel and the email marketing, the, uh, the advertising is another 3K. So it's 6K a month uh, on average. Yeah. Uh, Adam, you've got a question? Great. Uh, Chris, uh, you've got a question? I will answer that question. Business coming back after this will need us. Businesses need you now, Trent, not coming back. They need you now. Um, uh, there's a concern uh, of the second wave. Uh, Chris, I can't predict the future. And right now, I wouldn't even, I, I, something I wouldn't even consider. Uh, again, I'm not interested in what, uh, what, are, what are the possibilities of the future because I'm not living in the future. I'm actually living in today. I have to respond and only do the things that I can take control of now. I can't respond to something that hasn't happened yet. This is the danger that we find ourselves in. If we are focusing on the future, you can't, I don't know, if you can predict the future, then you're amazing. I need to hire you straight away. I need to invest in anything you say because you can say exactly what's happening tomorrow. Because the message right now, as I know, it can change from what happens in the morning to what happens in the evening, the message changes, right? From what happens in the morning to what is reported in the evening, it changes. I only need to, I only need to see one message a day and that's the message at the end of the day, right? But if anybody's giving you predictions or uh, outcomes or you know, all that sort of stuff, you cannot take it as gospel because how the hell do they know, right? How the hell do they know? If you listen to a doctor, doctors are giving you the worst case, complete disaster, disaster uh, scenarios, right? Because they're scientists, right? They're not human beings, they're scientists. So what they're doing right now is they're gonna say, well, pragmatically, this is the worst, this is, this is the extreme worst thing that happens. And somebody hears that and goes, holy shit, that's gonna happen. But it's not gonna happen. The worst thing in the world isn't gonna happen. Right, like I said, you know, we're talking to Damien earlier on. We've got businesses coming back to the marketplace. We've got businesses succeeding and growing and flourishing in what we perceive to be a downturn uh, market. Right, so there has never been a greater opportunity in the world, in our world, to be able to help people with business because most businesses haven't got it. The other thing I keep saying every day is stop listening to internet marketers. Talk to people who actually run and own businesses right? Because internet marketers don't know how to run a business. They're brilliant at copywriting, brilliant at building courses and selling courses. But if you actually look at their business model, their business model is flawed. They're the worst business people on the planet. Most internet marketers that I know are broke. They're not freaking rich, right? Um, so understand that, that they're great at copy and they're great at ideas and they're great at courses. But when it comes to running a real business with finance, administration, customer support, all that sort of stuff, only the players that understand that at the level I would listen to, but the majority of them don't run businesses. They're running promotions, yeah? So the people you need to spend time with is you need to join Facebook groups with business owners in it, brick and mortar, e-commerce, like people who are running uh, real businesses that have real teams, real management, real support, real products, right? That's where you're gonna learn. That's where you're gonna see what's going on in the real world. And that's right now where all the opportunities are. One of the things that some of my champions are doing is they're sitting saying, hey, let's look at your digital footprint right now because before this shit happened, it wasn't great. And maybe now you need to take, pay attention to some things that you haven't paid attention to. So this is the time to figure out what's gonna help and what's not gonna help. So we've put this together, a digital footprint audit that will assess your website, your SEO, your social media footprint, uh, your messaging out there, your branding, the descriptions. We're just gonna go through and see what's going on and I'm just gonna give you a list of things that need to be fixed and then you can decide where you wanna start, right? Uh, for everybody here who's in the uh, marketing game, that's an easy thing to do, yeah? Um, uh, so yes. So um, I'm going to, uh, uh, I'm going to, Uh, Damien says prospects that are concerned about a second wave can be moved faster into a digital solution. Uh, you need to get online, yeah, in case it hits. Absolutely. James uh, Sharkey, yes, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, yes. Mark, uh, by the way, my appointment is tomorrow, so I'll tell you about it. Awesome, congratulations. So, uh, where are you, Chris? Chris Kirkham. Chris Kirkham, do you have a microphone? Because I think I just want to answer your questions. Do you have a microphone, Chris? Just type yes in the chat. 
Yes, all right, man. Uh, let's uh, have a chit chat. Let me answer your questions here. Hey, Chris, how you doing? Can you hear me? Chris? Uh, you right now? I got you, man. How you doing, Chris? Very well, indeed. Yeah. So, ask me the question, I'll answer your question, so, for, so that other people can benefit from the question, or the, or the sure. answer. Question. Sure. The reason, the reason I asked about Australia is because the same thing applies to New Zealand, and um, we've got, we, we, we're going to come out of some lockdown next Monday. And, yep. uh, and uh, so that's why I asked the question. I'm try, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got a marketing email here, and uh, I'm, I'm trying to work out what words to put in it. And I didn't yep. want to put, the, the, my message would have been with the, with the we, we've over, our government has overcooked and got far too conservative. And I agree with you, yep. there's a lot of businesses are not going to come back. We, we're totally locked yep. out, man. I mean, totally. Yep. And way, yeah, way more. Zealand, Australia, New Zealand wants to kill and this they're disease. not going to come back. Hmm? Yeah. New Zealand wants to kill the disease. That's why your, your Prime Minister exactly. has made that decision. She wants to eradicate the disease completely. So that way, when you do come back, you're not going to have, you're going to minimise the impact and you're going to gradually come back to the market. Your market is, is every, your market, Chris, and every other market right now is devastated. Every market is devastated. However, there are parts of uh, markets in the industry. If you look at recession-proof businesses, they're all going through the roof. They need all the help they can get because they're taking advantage of the situation. But if you look at businesses that are coming back and looking at, there are going to be so many markets where there's going to be this huge gap of these businesses that are out of businesses, out of business, and there's going to be this market of businesses that are open and they're going to be flooded by those people looking for those services because they can't go and talk to the people who are out, right? So there's, this going, to be, there's going to be this mini boom that will also happen in New Zealand. So the message that you want to get out there, it's not so much, uh, it's not so much taking a, a doom and gloom. The message that you want to get out there is, are you, re you know, right now, are you accepting customers? Like not, not, not when you open the doors, like today. The email has to go out today. Uh, before the doors are open, before the lockdown uh, is open, because there are still businesses out there that are operating remotely. So the easiest message you can send right now is have you shut down and gone uh, like, like most people in the industry and gone away, or are you accepting customers right now? That's the email you want to write, right? Have you shut down like everybody else, or are you taking customers, or are you able to take customers right now? If you are, let's get on a call. That's the message. Pretty simple email, very, very short and punchy, right? You got I, agree with you. I agree with you totally. I've just, um, someone mentioned before, digital footprint. And I made yeah. a note of it. And I, I think that's yeah. very good. But well, well, right now, that's, that's something that everybody's looking at. Like right now, as everybody's sitting at home going, uh, shit, uh, how the hell do we get online, right? Uh, we haven't got yeah. this online stuff working properly or we haven't done, we know that it's important, but we just don't know what to do, right? So if people are, 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 have an ambiguous idea of what's going on, then maybe yep. something like a digital footprint assessment, which is a very different word, right? A digital foot, footprint assessment that's going to give you some key things that you need to be aware of, key things you need to, to pay attention to. Like right now, all our websites are wrong. Every website on the planet that hasn't been changed in the last 60 days is wrong right now. It's sending the wrong message, right? Because... Uh, because we want to, uh, you need to craft a message that's relevant. You need to identify if you're a business that has, uh, by the way, just because we come out of lockdown, Chris, doesn't mean that coronavirus has gone away, right? Just means that we're able to start to get back to some uh, sense of safety in our environment. But, we, but, but the virus hasn't disappeared. We haven't cured the virus. It's not going away. It'll still be around, right? Uh, it's just less and less people will be infected by it right so we still have to be mindful that we're operating under the conditions to minimize any safety issues or risks that our that our clients have so part of the marketing that people should be having right now is how do we mitigate how, how are we making sure that we're staying safe that's something that should be on their websites right now on their on their landing pages the next thing is is you need to craft an offer that is either providing more for the same or the same for less Add more value for the same price or offering the same service and price for less, right? Uh, uh, to help people's issue of cash flow. Does that, do you understand, Chris? Yeah, I do. I've actually, in this meeting, I'm actually halving my price for the first two months. 
Awesome. So what you're doing is you're going to say, hey, we want to meet you. We want to partner with you. And what we'll, we're going to invest half the fee that we normally charge for the first two months. We're going to pay that for you instead. Right. right. So you need to position. Exactly yeah, you need to position to say, listen, normally our fee is this. Because of this time, you're just getting back. We want to make this really affordable. We're going to cut in half the fee. So let's partner together to help you get the results you're looking for um, and get this thing moving. So that's the positioning on that structure. So Chris, right. thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate you uh, you sharing. Okay, thank you. Not a problem. All right. So, um, ba -ba -ba -ba. somebody else wanted to ask me a question. Prospects. Da -da 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 -da. So happy to answer another question. Adam, 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 Adam. Let me find you, Adam. Okay. Hey, Adam, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I'm very well yourself, John. Awesome, man. Thank you. Um, so, how can I help you? What's your question? What can I do for you? Yeah. So, uh, thank you for like all the. All, I've pretty much been on every call since you started doing this. Um, you've given me loads of valuable information, and I've gone from being like a generalized uh, agency. To now kind of settling on one specific uh, niche which is the like the green industry so landscaping lawn care and that sort of thing um yep. my my question i uh, i suppose um is like we've got about 17 clients right now in a whole plethora of different sectors and they all pay yep. like massive different ranges in terms of monthly retainers yep. um and so my biggest challenge i find is actually identifying uh, the, the size of businesses you can actually afford to pay a little bit more. Now you've mentioned, you know, the million pound, million dollar plus size businesses, but mm -hmm. we, we, we haven't, I don't think we've worked with a client that's up around that, that area yet. And because we haven't been trading a full year. So yep. I, what I'm, what I'm trying to establish is, um, like I know within the like the green industries, you've got like different categories. You've got like three hundred thousand, six hundred thousand, a million dollars, and then mid markets like two to five mm -hmm. million and upwards. Um, which so I'm which gonna give you this, I'm gonna give you a distinction. Yeah, I'm gonna give you some distinctions here, Adam. Right? Mm -hmm. um, where where you focus your attention most, that's where you're gonna go. If you're talking to small businesses, <laughs> that's who you're gonna work with. If you wanna work with bigger businesses. Bigger businesses yeah. are exactly the same as smaller businesses. It's just that they've got a few zeros. They've got the same sure. problems. They've got the same mm -hmm. issues, but their issues are bigger than the small business. So, so where you've been able to target small business, you've got 17 clients, which is freaking awesome, man. Congratulations. You've got 17 clients in your business. Uh, um, ultimately you want to, you've got some experience. You've been in business for a little under a year, which is, phenomenal right which is awesome to see you've got some experience under your belt don't don't uh, short sell uh what you've gone through what you've done to get these clients how you've helped these clients get some results and i know you've probably lost a few clients along the way as well but if we're sure. talking about businesses that are a, a bit a three million dollar to five million dollar business adam is still a very small business it's still a very yeah, I know small that. business I a, a 10 million yeah. a, a, a twenty million dollar business. That's when they start. That's when you start going. Okay, we're starting to level up into uh, the mid tiers. The in the United States, a small business is regard, regarded any business doing under a hundred million dollars is a small business, right? right okay. That's right, a yeah, yeah. big scope of clients in the marketplace, right? Oh, sure, but, oh, but to me, I I see a small business uh, uh, at that fifteen million mark, that's still a small business. 20 million plus, when you start to get a 20 million plus, you're starting to get into a medium sized type business within a, within a market economy. So it's very sure. easy to identify businesses at that level that you say that you want to work with, okay? So here's how you identify them. For me, the first place to identify them is how many employees you have. Any mm -hmm. company that has 50, 20, 20 more employees, 20 more employees, they're going to be doing between two and $5 million in revenue. 20 or more employees. Now on LinkedIn, if you're looking at these green building companies, especially commercial companies, right? They're on LinkedIn, you can find them. CEOs mm -hmm. of companies of 50 plus employees, right? So you can identify those businesses very directly. Now, like I said to you, Adam, those businesses have the same problem that the small businesses that you're working with have, 
right? Sure. So mm-hmm. the approach, the approach isn't any different. It's the same approach. It's the same mm-hmm. sales strategy, same sales pitch, but the pricing sure. structure needs to be different. And that's one thing yes. I will share with you, Adam. If you go to a bigger company and you price too low, they yeah. won't buy because they don't. They go, "What's wrong?" That, you know, where's you know, because they're sitting saying. Well, I don't understand, Adam. I just spent, uh, we're spending $360,000 for a billboard. And you're telling me, and that billboard, we don't know if that, that, that's a branding thing. We don't even know if we're going to get customers out of that. But you're telling me for 1500 bucks a month that you're going to bring me 30 clients. That doesn't make any sense, right? Sure. So bigger companies will pay bigger money because they see, as long as you position the value, they'll see mm-hmm. the price point. I should do a whole sure. training on price. And in fact, that mm-hmm. might be giving give me an idea for tomorrow. Um, but, um, but I want to answer your question uh, and, I, and I want to give you some context and some frameworks. The green building market is huge. Like it's a big yeah. market. The areas mm-hmm. that you want to be focusing on in green building, the solar companies, but then green based products, cut floor coverings, um, uh, uh, window, uh, 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 you know, um, glaziers who do most, most. So, okay. So I'm going to give you an insight here, Adam, if you go to green based companies, most green based companies are not green. They have a whole product range that they used to service the market in the non-green market. And now because sure. they're manufacturing, they can manufacture a green product. So the very same brands uh, that are in the non-green category are now having green products. There's even people, there's even green plumbers out there. I don't know you can be a green plumber, but you can be a green plumber, right? Sure. Um, they're, they're, the solar market is green, yeah? Uh, f- wall, uh, f- uh, floor coverings, building materials, uh, glazing, uh, um, um, uh, technical or technology, lots of those things are green right now, yeah? Things sure. that, the, things that uh, can operate with the new super batteries and all that sort of stuff. So the market's big. Like your, those niches that you're talking about, are huge. They don't mm-hmm. operate any differently. In fact, in most cases, the green products are more expensive than the non-green products because they actually are more expensive to produce, right? Sure. Uh, the science that goes into them, they don't mass, they, 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 uh, uh, mass marketing or mass, mass uh, distribution is a problem. So they tend to be more expensive. Like if you go eco, uh, that can be very pricey, right? In the long term, save you a lot of money, right? Your house will mm-hmm. pay for itself or whatever in you know, 50 years right but in the now it's it's money yeah so the green market understands or uh, uh, we as people right now for the last uh uh two well i would say the last three years adam uh ever yeah. since uh, it's probably happened more so since donald trump became the president of the united states since 2016 right i cannot believe he's been there for four years nearly um um but uh, uh here's the thing climate change has become an incredibly big issue. And in the last two years, climate change has become an even bigger issue. And this year in Australia, one third of our country was on fire because of climate issues. Uh, we then went into floods and then we went into disaster, uh, disastrous storms, right? Uh, mm-hmm. so, so climate is on the agenda, right? And in every government, right, it is on the agenda. So people are very aware uh, uh, more aware today than ever before. And so they are leaning towards how do we choose better? How do we choose more green? How do we do that? Green companies have to shift their marketing. They can't market green products like they market traditional products because their message has to fit where the market is in relation to what they're thinking about how they're going to save the client. Yeah. Sure. So, mm-hmm. so, so that gives you context, right? So big companies, Thank man, you. you can go to them right now. You, you don't have to wait. Sure. You can just go and contact them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so if you, you want me to go on. No, no, carry on. It'd be good if you, you mentioned about doing a thing on pricing. That would be uh, yeah. pretty cool. Okay, so price is... Um, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, 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 so <laughs> I had this conversation with this... I had the conversation with one of my mentors. Uh, we were sitting in his basement in Cleveland, Ohio, in Cleveland, Ohio, and he actually said this to me, and, and, and it makes a lot of sense, and I've always known this, but he said this thing, mm-hmm. called, he said, price is elastic. Price is elastic. Price is mm-hmm. elastic when it's, when it's uh, in context. So let me give you an example of that, right? So, for example, if, um, um, well, let's pick Arnie Schwarzenegger. We all know who Arnie Schwarzenegger is, right? Sure. So if Arnie Schwarzenegger came in, he's, you know, he, he's got a history of being Mr. Olympia nine times in the world, 
you know, uh, he was, the, he was the, you know, he's still into fitness today. Um, you know, even in his senior years, I think, I think he's coming up to about 70 years of age. He's still, got, you know, he's still got a pretty uh, solid build and body about him. But if Arnie Schwarzenegger came to you and said, Adam, I'm going to do, I'm going to run a very exclusive class and I'm going to go and sit down in detail, uh, uh, craft a plan for you to shape and suit your body so that you can mold your body in a way so that you feel energetic, fit, uh, fully vibrant and have you have this body for the rest of your life. Now I'm going to, I'm charging people uh, um, $100,000 to do that trans uh, transformation, right? Sure. How many people we think would go, hell yeah, I'll spend the hundred grand, right? Yeah. A, a lot if they had the money. Yeah. Absolutely. A lot of people, a lot of people who, who want that, who know mm -hmm. that will go and spend a hundred thousand. Look, I know people are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on plastic surgery. So if Arnie came out and said, hey, I'll build and shape the body, you're going to work with me, hasta la vista, baby, right? You're going to work yeah. with me personally. I'm going to help shape the model, right, in the body. Uh, I haven't got my German accent on or my Austrian, my Austrian accent on. But if I'm doing that, right, there's context, right, because it's Arnie Schwarzenegger. Now, me, John Logar, who comes out and says, hey, you know what? I want to going to shape your body, give you the whole thing, and uh, you're going to charge me, I'm going to charge you 100 grand. How, how do you think I'm going to go? No. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to do very well, right? I might be able to sell no. the $30 plan, but I'm certainly not going to sell the $100,000 plan. So sure. context, the context and the price is going to be elastic in comparison to the perception of value. So sure. I have sold the same thing, right? So I'll give an example. Uh, um, so a friend of mine uh, wanted, needed to sell his car, right? He needed to get his car. He was traveling overseas. Uh, he was moving and he wanted to sell a car, but he didn't want to sell a car too cheaply. But he went on the car.com site, put his car up, um, he was selling a, 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 um, a, an A4 Audi Quattro, uh, you know, and it, and it was okay. It was, it was just a standard version. It wasn't a sporty version. Um, and yep. he put a price on it. It was pretty cheap. It was a pretty cheap price. I thought it was cheap uh, in comparison to other cars that were like that. It's in immaculate condition, but he had a price and he wanted to sell. And so because he had it so cheap, he had a lot of people wanting to find out why is this car so cheap? And then they find out why he wants to sell. Oh, look, I'm moving. So, you know, uh, this is a distressed sale. I'm moving and I need to cash and I can't be around. So the time frame. so there's this pressure to sell this car, right? And yep. so he found it difficult to sell the car. Like nobody wanted to pay the, the, the price that he was offering because everyone was trying to push him to a lower price, right? Even though his price mm -hmm. was the best price for the vehicle that was online at the time. So I said to him, said, hey, let's normally, if we look at, let's look at the most expensive car, at the price point, right? Look at the car that's selling at the highest price point in the same model, right? And we're going to put another $2,000 on top of that price, right? But here's what we're going to do, right? Um, we are going to uh, go and spend uh, a little bit of money and redo, get, get some rims on the car, get some low profile tires on the car, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, we're going to tint the windows black because this, the car was actually uh, uh, a real uh, sort of a navy, dark, rich navy uh, uh, blue. So we're going to tint the windows nice and uh, black. We're going to put a couple of trimmings. We're going to do a full, uh, uh, a full, um, uh, 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 you know, clean out and spec out. So it looks amazing. And then we're going to take the shots. We're going to put online. And we're going to charge two thousand dollars more for the most expensive car in your category. Half an hour of him posting that car on on the interweb, it sold. Half an hour. Guy rang him, said, "I'll take it." Right? Didn't even haggle on the price. Didn't even have a haggle on the price. So it was eight and a half thousand dollars more, right, than what he was trying mm -hmm. to sell it at the cheapest price. So he picked up now the cost of his little freshen, freshening up uh, was, I think it was 1500 bucks to do the fresh up, right? So he picked sure. up what, it, what he had, he picked up uh, $7,000 in, in profit, right? Sold mm -hmm. the car at a much higher price and, and kicked in seven grand cash in his back pocket on top of what he was gonna sell a car for, right? Mm -hmm. Small cosmetic change, change the perspective of the car, make it look good, change the copy. The copy was like, hey, do you wanna look like, you know, you wanna drive uh, with uh, energy exuberance and, and actually love driving. If you love driving, you're gonna love driving this car, right? Mm -hmm. This car is a head turner, yeah? Uh, and so it's sold, right? Pricing is elastic. In our world, most people undercharge for what they do. Tomorrow, I'll talk about uh, uh, different pricing models and how to consider your pricing options. You need to look That'd at your costs brilliant. and your margins. Most, most, people, most people haven't, Adam, worked out what their margins are. You haven't worked out what your hourly cost of, of delivery for your product automation. 
Have you worked out, have you sat down, looked at how much you charge a client, how many hours is involved to manage the customer, what you're paying out in salaries, what you're paying out in tax, and then what you're left over with? Have you worked that out? Uh, no, I've, I've, I've attempted to. I was going down the route of really uh, aiming for a, like a 40% margin at the end, but I think that's too low. I think we should be like 60 or something like that. And I've heard of 30%, other agencies. 30% cost? 30% yeah. cost, 70% gross. 30% cost, yeah. and, that, and that 30%, by the way, uh, Adam, includes your salary. That 30% okay. includes your salary, right? Yeah. That 70% wow. is gross profit. You don't get sure. any of that money, right? You get, to keep, you get to keep the profit of that money, and you get to sure. uh, spend some money on advertising, and you get, yeah. to, uh, 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 you get to keep a dividend for the business. Right. I mean, so I, you want to work, you I, want to work on a margin of thirty to seventy. I know I've really been undercharging, like for what we do, but like um, yeah. some of it's been strategical in terms of it gets us like um, some good, okay clients in terms of yeah. in their industry um, and that sort of thing. But yeah, overall, we we massively undercharge for what we do basically, and we're nowhere near that seventy yeah. percent. So I need to go back to the drawing board in terms of price to come up with. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. but, but also price is about confidence as well. You've got to own sure. the price, right? Sure. It's very easy to charge cheap. And here's the thing. Uh, do you, uh, do you do in, in all your offers? Have you ever offered that the client pay everything up front? Um, do do I did do monthly. Yeah. I was even considering yeah. offering them. So if you start uh, dealing if, if, yeah, Go on. I was going to say I was even considering putting a thing together where they can do a one-time payment, or they mm -hmm. or they can apply like apply for finance kind of thing, and spread in the cost. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. I was I was looking at that because cash flow is obviously very important. So, um, for us. Yeah. Um. So. But some and, people got cash. Some people sure. got cash. Right? Sure. Like, so some people, if you don't offer it, they can't buy it. So what you, you know, you might sit and say, you know what, if you really want to save some money in this time of, uh, if there's a, if you've got challenges in money, we'll do a one-time payment deal and you'll save 20%. Pay up front. Is that what you recommend right. on a one-time deal? 20% or what I'd would probably you probably do? So? I'd probably, I'd probably more do 10%. I'm only normally do a 10% on upfront. Yeah. Okay. On an upfront sure. payment, I normally do 10%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you don't offer it, they can't buy it, Adam. And we sure. get the chance. So, give an example. One of my champions uh, a few weeks back uh, made an offer for a hundred and twenty thousand dollar deal. Said to the client, yep. one hundred nine thousand dollars up front, save yourself eleven grand. And two days later, the client deposited one hundred nine thousand dollars in his bank account. Wow! That happened. Two, that happened three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And all he's doing is Facebook ads. So the client paid wow. one hundred nine thousand dollars up front for Facebook ads. James yeah. says that was a good day. Yes, it was a very good day. <laughs> yes yeah i mean uh, i'm definitely yeah. i know i'm definitely i like we can sign clients we have only yep. lost one client since we've been going yep. um awesome. so we must be doing something great um mm -hmm. we get referrals but the trouble is the price point we're in with those referrals yep. uh that those business owners tend to congregate around the same type of people and find in so they're yep. Uh, the same type of people who think the same yep. way so i'm trying to move so, out of that <laughs> so what you, what you focus on most what you focus on most becomes your reality what yeah. you focus on most becomes, so if you want to focus on working with bigger clients you're going to work with bigger clients right yeah if you focus on working with smaller clients you're going to work with smaller clients start no, talking start having conversations with bigger clients yeah. Mm -hmm. And with your mm -hmm. pricing, all of you who are listening here, if you want to, so I'm just going to ask this question. And if you type in one, right, just go one, 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 right. Only if you, if you agree with me, would you like me to share with you how you can ge uh, generate just pure net profit, additional net profit, and the client will accept, right, the offer that you make? Who wants to, who wants to know the strategy? Just go one, right. I'm going to share with you something really simple that if you do this today, Right, you, this, was, this is going to give you a huge net profit bump on your service, even you, Adam. Right, mm -hmm. we've got a whole bunch of people going one, 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 one. Right, they're all going one like crazy. Yeah, all right, so here's the strategy. So, the next time you do a pitch to somebody, Adam, and everybody here that's on this call, 
when you go to the market, what I want you to do is whatever price that you're about to write down for your service, increase that price immediately by 20%. So if you're about to offer a service at $1,500 a month, then offer that service at uh, 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 1750 per month. Increase the price by 20%, right? Then the next time you go to do a pitch again, Adam, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. You're going increase to it by 20 percent. increase the growth price again by another 20 percent, right? Then the next pitch mm -hmm. you do, you're going to increase the price by another 20. So all of a sudden, you've increased the price by 60 percent on the third customer, and that sure. means that here's the here's the beauty of what what I've just shared. You know that extra money that you charge the customer, the increased revenue. That you yeah. have not changed your service. The service stays the same. The cost mm -hmm. stays the same. So that twenty yeah. percent, you get to take that money, take a little bit off to pay the tax, and then you put that money in your back pocket, right? Yeah. Because that is net profit. That is sure. net profit. So every in every price increase, if you don't change the service, the cost of the service, and you increase mm -hmm. the price by twenty percent, that is twenty percent, mm -hmm. right? that you get to keep over and above what you're doing. So every time, every time, a little bit up, a little bit up, before you know it, you might, you, you might be doubling your prices in about two months time. For the same that's service, right. not, not doing mm -hmm. anything else. Now, that's if you're a scaredy cat. If you're a scaredy cat, incrementally increase the prices, right? If you, uh, if you know that you should be, you're worth more, and you know you should sure. be charging more for what you deliver, then ask mm -hmm. the price, make the offer of the price of where you want it to be. Because me as a customer, Adam, I cannot mm -hmm. buy what you have to offer if you don't offer it to me. You are in charge of the price, not the client. You. Sure. And if you, mm -hmm. you have to be the buyer, you have to own the price first. You have to own the price first, right? Sure. If you own the price, you buy what you have to sell for yourself. Then when you sit yeah. down in your meeting, you're going to come to that meeting with conviction, conviction, mm -hmm. with confidence and strength. The person's going yes. to sit over the other side of the table and go, that is amazing deal, right? Yeah. How, many times, how many times have you had a situation, Adam, in the last 12 months where somebody's gone, wow, that's a lot cheaper than I thought it would be? Anybody say that to you? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a few people. You, yeah. Yeah, when somebody says that to you or when somebody says yes too quickly, you, yeah, know, you, that. you know that you've got to put your prices up. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing, yeah. and this is the thing that I've just shared. So if we increase our price, increase our price, we increase our price, right? Mm -hmm. As we're as we're scaling, increasing our prices, we're going to get to a point where people are going to say no, right? So that means we've hit a threshold. So what we need to do there is we just we we what we do need to do there is we now need to add some value, and then increase the price again. So as soon mm -hmm. as you hit a threshold, then what you want to do yeah. is you want to increase the price. You've got to add yep. some value. And you just keep increasing your prices. Yeah. And just one, average, one last. The average client. Yeah, please. Yeah, sorry. All right. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Oh, no, no, you carry on and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask. Sorry. No, no, no. Ask me the um, question no. because I want to get. I, I, get I was, it was, a, it was a slightly different tandem. So obviously we've yeah. got um, employees like designers and stuff like that. But um, mm -hmm. one thing I'm, I'm weighing uh, the pros and cons against is whether we uh grow down in growing the number of employees that we have or utilizing a like white label solution and you've mentioned global tool marketing is it global oh, yeah, tool or global global tell global tell marketing yeah yeah and yep. why what why do you recommend them because they they have 200 team members all over the world that means they sure. can manage hundreds of clients and hundreds of projects in any week uh, they're one of the white, largest white labelers on the planet. They're pretty good. Uh, IPPC, okay. uh, Rob Porter over Invisible PPC, they are awesome. Highly recommend them. Ed Stapleton over at ClicksGeeks, highly recommend them. Uh, Brent over at Reliable Marketing for Facebook, they're pretty cool. Uh, but that's only a handful of uh, white labelers. Now, with white labelers, you've got to work with them to make sure uh, you know that your client you've got to be very clear about their expectations You got to be clear about how they work with you But that if you want to scale faster then scale with an outsourced team that'll that'll scale you faster, right? Yeah, but you want to um, you want to look at the process. Yeah in-house yeah, is expensive um, Yes, yeah Yeah, how do you think big, uh, do you think the multi-million dollar agencies the the, the the guys like WPP, Publicist Mojo, Clemenger, uh, um, uh, Mavers, all these guys in the big market, do you think they employ their own in-house teams? No, they, they don't. Production no. Companies. They, 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 they're employing people in India, right? Yeah. Uh, they're, running, mm -hmm. they're running Facebook ads out of India, yeah? 
for their yeah. clients and they're charging their clients millions of dollars in advertising fees yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. so they're outsourcing the, the, there's a big reason why they're big because they've learned to uh, manage their costs yeah and outsource mm -hmm. all right and so, thank you for being here i really appreciate brilliant. asking questions uh, i'll uh, be on the call make tomorrow. sure you uh, increase your <laughs> awesome mate make sure you increase your prices um for those of you uh thank you for being here um uh, uh i really appreciate you hopping on uh the calls um if you haven't been there already if you go to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go um uh, hop on uh, hop on that site uh, it'll give you the link for this webinar registration. It'll give you a link to our YouTube channel, our Facebook group of Consulting Unleashed. Uh, if you know of anybody that should uh, be here with me uh, doing some of this stuff, then go to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go. Uh, let them know uh, the stuff that you're picking up there. I hope it's been useful. The thing that I will say to you today, like I say every day, just reach out to one person, uh, say hi to them, make sure they're okay, and have a really positive conversation with them. If you do that with one person a day, uh, you're going to have an awesome day. Thank you. Let me know if this stuff works. It'll be really cool. I'm going to be asking so, uh, for people for some results and things like that, uh, which will be awesome. Uh, I can see a whole bunch of people chatting. I really appreciate you uh, you being here. Um, uh, Jimmy says, I sent you a Facebook messenger. Thank you. Um, all right. So uh, thanks, everybody. Have a great day. I'll see you same time, same bat channel tomorrow. Uh, make sure you implement this. I hope this has been useful. Peter Smith, thank you for asking and being persisting about the, uh, the appointment funnel. Uh, now it's out there. So uh, I'm wishing you all the very best. Go out and get some clients, everybody. Talk to you soon.